Welcome to our lecture online. Now we're ready to do at least a visual example of how to work out a circuit using the Laplace transform. So here we have a very simple circuit. We have a voltage supply, we have a resistor, an inductor, and a capacitor with the values given. There are some initial conditions given as well. The voltage supply is equal to 10 UT in volts, of course. That means that at time equals zero, the volts goes up to 10 volts, and that is a step function. At time equals zero, the current through the inductor is at negative one amps, and the voltage across the capacitor is plus five volts. So these are the initial conditions of the inductor and the capacitor. So what we're going to do here is a visual representation of what the circuit looks like in the frequency domain. So essentially, it's a Laplace transform of the circuit. Notice that the voltage then becomes 10 over S, which is essentially the Laplace transform of this function right here. The resistor stays the same as 10 over 3 ohms. The Laplace transform of the inductor in the frequency domain is 5S. The capacitor in the frequency domain is 10 over S. Then here we can see the initial current through the inductor and the initial voltage across the capacitor. And so that is essentially the transformed circuit. So what we're going to do now is we're going to add up all the voltages leading into the unknown node V1 because essentially what we want to do is we want to know what is the voltage at this node. So write this node right here, what is the voltage equal to as a function of time? So we need to then solve for this V right here and we're going to do that in the frequency domain. So we take all the currents going into that uh, node equals all the currents leaving the node. So notice the current entering the node is the voltage difference. It's 10 over S minus V1 divided by the resistance here. That's the current leading into the node. Here we have the, the current through the inductor, which is the, the voltage difference between here and here. Of course, since this is grounded, this is at zero volts, so V1 minus zero, divided by the reactance of the inductance in the frequency domain. Then here, we're taking the initial current at time equals zero, divided by S. Then here we have the voltage difference between here and here. Oh, I'm sorry, from here and here, because we want to be across the capacitor. So it's V1 minus the voltage across the capacitor. That difference here divided by the capacitor reactance in the frequency domain, 10 over S. Now what we need to do is we need to take this equation and solve it for V1. So notice that we do some algebraic manipulation. Here we multiply, we divide by 10 over 3, same as multiplying by 3 over 10. So you can see that's applied here. Here we have the same, V1 divided by 5S minus negative 1 over S, because that's a current at time equals 0. And here we have V1 minus the voltage across capacitor at time equals 0. So that means uh, V1, minus, uh, V1 minus 5. And then we divide that by 10 over S, which is the same as multiplying by S over 10. That's where this S comes from, and that's why this S down in the denominator disappears. So you can see algebraically how we get to this equation. Then we just continue to simplify the equation so we can isolate V1. Then V1 is going to be equal to the left side equation, which is 40 plus 5S divided by this quantity right here. And then, of course, yeah, you don't have to do this. You can just probably simply leave it as... Uh, 40 plus 5s because what you're going to do next is you're going to use partial fractions to turn that into two separate uh, fractions right here. So use the partial fraction technique and again we'll show you in more detail how to do that later on various examples. We just want to kind of show you uh, how to go through this. Once you have it like this you're not ready to do the inverse transform. 35 over s plus 1 is the same as 35 times e to the minus t and 30 divided by s plus 2 is the same as 30 e to the minus 2t and of course you have the negative sign here and this then becomes the equation of the voltage as a function of time times of course the step function ut because before time equals zero there's no voltage after time equals zero it gets turned on and then the voltage at that node will be equal to this in volts um, as a function of time. So that's how we use the Laplace transform to take a circuit, convert it into its Laplace equivalent, so to speak. What you're doing is you're doing the transformation from the time domain to the frequency domain. You then set up an equation to, def to determine the voltage of this note right here, and then you transform it back into the time domain to get the answer. So 
It's actually what happens then is instead of doing a complicated differential equation, you end up doing a simplified algebraic equation. And that's the benefit of using the Laplace transform.